Hello everyone, this is Jeff Murren. I'm um, wanting to continue our conversation on the Iliad by Homer, specifically the Robert Fagel's translation. Um, and in this particular video, we are going to look at book 16, um, Patroclus Fights and Dies. Spoiler alert, just from the, uh, the title of this uh, book alone. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right on in because there is a lot that happens in this particular chapter. Um, and this may end up being a fairly long video just so I can fit a lot of the things that I find important in here. Um, but I will say that if you have not read this particular book before watching this video, please pause it, uh, read and check it out. This is, I, so far, the most action-packed book that we've had with all kinds of uh, battle scenes and uh, blood and guts and gore. <laughs> so if that's your kind of thing, you are definitely in luck. All right. So we have Patroclus here. And if you remember, Patroclus is the person who has been uh, with Achilles, kind of like a, a, a hanger on. I don't know if that's a, a good term to use as far as Achilles goes. Um, and he was the one who was looking after Eurypylus whenever the battle was going on. And he said, Eurypylus, look, there's an aide here who's going to tend to you. I need to go speak with Achilles because we're getting our butts kicked by the Trojans. And without any kind of help from the likes of Achilles, we're going to be stranded here. They're going to burn our ships. We got our backs to the sea. And without any ships, there's no way we can return home. So we will either die here, be enslaved here, whatever. You know, he, he fears the worst and with good reason. So Patroclus leaves Eurypylus there to go speak with Achilles. So we see here at the very beginning, I'm going to start reading on page 14, uh, 412. All right. Um, it says, so they fought to, so they fought to the death around that benched beak, that bench beaked ship as Patroclus reached Achilles, his great commander and wept warm tears like a dark spring running down some desolate rock face, its shaded currents flowing and the brilliant runner Achilles saw him coming. Filled with pity, and spoke out uh, winging words. Why in tears, Patroclus? Like a girl or baby running after her mother. Of course, you know, this uh, patriarchal society, a girl is not someone who um, would be in battle and fighting or anything like that. Okay, like a girl, a baby running after her mother, begging to be picked up, and she tugs her skirts, holding her back as she tries to hurry off, all tears, fawning up at her, till she takes her in her arms. That's how you look, Patroclus, streaming live tears. But why? All right, so we see uh, on, let's say, line 22 on the very next page, okay, Patroclus' words to Achilles, all right? So it says, with a wrenching groan, you answered your friend, Patroclus, oh, my writer. That's the poet speaking right there. So here are Patroclus' words. Achilles, son of Peleus, greatest of the Achaeans, spare me your anger, please. Such heavy blows have overwhelmed the troops, our former champions, all laid up in the ships. All are hit by arrows or run through by spears. There's powerful Diomedes, brought down by an archer, Odysseus, wounded, and Agamemnon, too, the famous spearman, and Eurypylus took an arrow shot in the thigh. Healers are working over them, using all their drugs, trying to bind the wounds. But you are intractable, Achilles. Pray God such anger never seizes me, such rage you nurse, cursed, your own, uh, cursed in your own courage. What good will a man, even one in the next generation, get from you unless you defend the Argives from disaster? Like, you need to do something for future generations' sake, all right? It doesn't just affect you. It affects all of us and those of us to come, he's saying there, okay? Um, your heart of iron, uh, you heart of iron. He was not your father, the horseman Peleus. Thetis was not your mother. Never. The salt, gray, sunless ocean gave you birth and the towering blank rocks. Your temper is so relentless. Like, give it up, man. There are bigger fish to fry here than this, this 
grudge that you're holding against Agamemnon, all right? But you can still see about line 65 that Achilles just is not giving up on that, not at all, okay? He says, that girl, remember Briseis, okay? The sons of Achaia picked her as my prize, and I sacked a walled city, won her with my spear, but right from my grasp he tears her, mighty Agamemnon, that son of Atreus, treating me like some vagabond, some outcast, stripped of all my rights. Enough! All right? And so he's still holding on to that and just cannot let that go enough to save his own countrymen from being destroyed by the Trojans, all right? We're continuing on here. Um, let's see here, where do I wanna go? Uh, about line 102, even if Zeus, the thundering Lord of Hera, lets you seize your glory, you must not burn for war against these Trojans, madmen lusting for battle, not without me. You will only make my, you will only make my glory that much less, all right? So what happens is that comment right there is because um, if Patroclus is to go to war and he wants to wear Achilles' armor, remember that was one of the things I think it was mentioned in an earlier book, you know, don't, don't, if you find yourself winning, don't win without coming to get me to join in. Almost like, I will join in so you don't get all of the glory there, Patroclus. I'm your leader. I'm Achilles. Okay, this there's a lot of, uh, a lot of pride, a lot of crazy pride. All right, uh, let's look about line one fifteen. Oh, would to God, Father Zeus, Athena, and Lord Apollo, not one of all these Trojans could flee his death, not one, no Argive either, but we could stride from the slaughter so we could bring Troy's hollowed crown of towers toppling down around us, you and I alone. All right, so wanting that glory, absolutely wanting that glory, even if it's Patroclus that gets the ball rolling. All right. So what we see on page 416 is the first burning of the Greek ships. You remember, the Trojans have gotten through the ramparts. The Trojans are fighting them all around their ships. And what we see is the burning of the first Greek ship. All right. So let's look at about line 136 on page 416. Hector lunged at Ajax toe-to-toe, -to -toe, hacked his ashwood pike with a heavy sword, and striking the socket just behind the point, he slashed the head clean off. Leaving the shaft, he the lopped stump dangling in Ajax's fist, useless, bronze head bounding away, clanging along the ground. All right, so he ch like Hector chops off the tip of Ajax's spear. And deep in his heart, brave Ajax knew and shuddered. Here was the work of the gods, thundering Zeus on high, cutting him from battle, dashing all his plans. Zeus determined to grant the Trojans triumph now, so <laughs> Ajax knows. Oh my gosh, if Hector just did that, that must be the intervention of the gods. Remember, I've told you time and time again that the Greeks say the only reason you Trojans are having any success is because uh, Zeus is on your side. Otherwise, if you didn't have him on your side, we would make quick work of you because we are the Greeks. We are far superior in battle than you Trojans are. It's just that you've got Zeus on your side. Right. <clears throat> Zeus determined, uh, wait, sorry, I'm about line for 145. So Ajax drew back out of range, and then they flung their tireless fire at a fast trim ship. She was up in flames at once, engulfed in quenchless fire. In a flash, the blaze went swirling around the stern, and Achilles slapped his thighs and urged Patroclus to arms, Patroclus. Prince and master horsemen, I can see the blaze go roaring up the ships. They must not destroy them. No escape route then. Quick, strap on my gear. I'll rouse the troops. All right, so this is enough for even Achilles to say, Patroclus, you better get out there. You better make something happen for us. All right, and so he does. He puts on, uh, Patroclus puts on Achilles' armor and take some of Achilles' wares uh, with him. He does not take 
um, <clears throat> Achilles' spear because he can't lift it. Only Achilles can lift Achilles' spear, all right? And that's something that we see often in um, uh, uh, when we look at the Odyssey. Um, there is only one person who can pull back Odysseus's bow, and that's Odysseus himself. No one else can do it. Of course, what we see is his son, Telemachus, eventually is able to do it, which is sort of that uh, rite of passage where the son becomes as powerful as, or you can see that the son is primed and ready to take the, the, the throne eventually because he is starting to rise to the level of his own father. But in here, what we see is no matter what, Patroclus cannot take Achilles' spear because um, he is not strong enough to do so. All right. Um, that, that, that commentary, I think, is on page 417 if you want to pay attention to that. All right. So moving on, what we'll see is Achilles will give words to the Myrmidons, his, his people there. He says, Myrmidons, this is on page 419, about uh, starting four lines down. Myrmidons, not one of you dare forget those threats you hurled from the fast trim ships against the Trojans, all while I raged, and I was the one you blamed down to the last fighter. Brutal son of Peleus, your mother nursed you on gall, merciless iron man, confining your own men to the ships against their will. So home we go in those ships and cut the seas again, since now such deadly anger strikes your captain, denouncing me. My comrades clustered together, always grumbling, well, here's a tremendous work of battle. Look, blazing before your eyes, and just the sort you long for all these days. So each man tense with courage, Fight the Trojans down. Guys, this is what you've been waiting for. This is what you've been wanting. And you were mad at me for not getting into battle, for bringing you here. And then we're not jumping into battle because I got my uh, issues with Agamemnon. But here, look around you right now. This is what you've been waiting for. And let's have at it. All right. Just, he says, fight the Trojans down. All right. So Achilles is left alone. And he goes in to his quarters and he pulls out a special sacred cup, right? Fills it with wine and uh, pours some of it on the ground. He does, a, he does the certain specific Greek rituals before addressing the gods. He's going to offer up a prayer. And we see this prayer on page 420, around line uh, 276 thereabouts. He says, King Zeus, Lord of Dodona's holy shrine, dwelling far away, brooding over Dodona's bitter winters. Your prophets dwelling around you, Zeus, the Selly sleeping along the ground with unwashed feet. If you honored me last time and heard my prayer and rained destruction down on all Achaia's ranks, now once more I beg you, bring my prayer to pass. So basically, if you heard my prayer before when I said I want the Greeks to lose in battle with the Trojans. If you heard that prayer and this what's going on right now is the fulfillment of that prayer, I want you to listen to this prayer also that I'm going to offer up. All right. Continue on. He says, I myself hold out on shore with the beach ships here, but I send my comrade forth to war with troops of Myrmidons. Launch glory along with him, high lord of thunder Zeus, Fill his heart with courage, so even Hector learns if Patroclus has the skill to fight his wars alone, my friend in arms, or his hands can rage unvanquished only when I go wading in and face the grind of battle. But once he repels the roaring onslaught from the ships, let him come back to me and our fast fleet unharmed. With all my armor around him, all our comrades fighting around my friend. So once he starts to get the advantage and starts to push the Trojans away, I want Patroclus to come back to me unharmed. And we can join forces and finish the job. Continuing on, it says, So Achilles prayed, and Zeus in all his wisdom heard those prayers. One prayer, this is important right here, one prayer the father granted, the other he denied. 
Patroclus would drive the onslaught of the ships, that much Zeus granted, true, but denied him safe and sound return from battle. And of course, we've known this was going to be the case because of the title of Book 16, Patroclus Fights and Dies. But what we see right here is um, Achilles saying, hey, look, Zeus, if you've heard my prayer so far, and what I'm witnessing right here is the granting of my prayer, I'm going to add or augment or change or alter in some way the prayer that I gave. All right, I'm sending Patroclus with troops out to fight um, against the Trojans. Please see to it that he is successful. And he is so successful that once he starts to gain some ground, he comes back to me and he comes back unharmed. And it says there that Zeus will grant one of those, you know, the success in pushing the Trojans out. But he's not going to grant the other one. He's not going to see to it that Patroclus returns unharmed. Even on page uh, 422, you will see that um, about like line 346 or 347, this, he creates an Argive breakthrough, Patroclus does. Uh, bright as the moment Zeus, the lord of lightning, moves from a craggy mountain ridge, a storm cloud massing dense, and all the lookout peaks stand out, and the jutting cliffs and the steep ravines, and down from the high heavens burst the boundless bright air. So now the Argives drove the ravening fire clear of the warships, winning a little breathing room, but not much. No real halt to the buck and rush of battle. For despite the surge of the Argives primed for war, the Trojans were still not wheeling around in headlong rout away from the black holes. Forced back from them, true, they braced for battle still and made a stand. So it's not like they're... What Patroclus did just drove all of the Trojans away, but they do recognize, whoa, we need to back up. We're still going to stand our ground, but we see that something's happening here. All right. Um, let's continue on. So on page 424, what we see is Patroclus in battle, moving from 424 to 425. Just some things about line, let's say 434 on page 424. It says, and Hector? Hector's speeding horses swept him away, armor and all, leaving his men to face their fate. He goes on, Patroclus says, you know, slaughter Trojans, and Trojans choked all roads. Now moving over to page 425, a couple lines down, it says, Patroclus, wherever he saw the biggest masses dashing before him, there he steered, plowing ahead with savage cries, and fighters tumbled out of their chariots headfirst, crushed under their axles, war cars crashing over, yes, but Straight across the trench went his own careening team at superhuman bound. Magnificent racing stallions give to the gods to Peleus' shining immortal gifts, straining breakneck on as Patroclus' high courage urged him against Prince Hector, keen for the kill, but Hector's veering horses swept him clear. All right, so this is Patroclus making a lot of headway here, and Hector realizing that it's going on and thinking, uh-oh, and his horses are keeping him clear from Patroclus making these advances right his way. All right, so um, what we see here on 425 and 426 is one of Patroclus' kills in battle. At the very bottom, the last two lines of 425, it says, And next he went for Thester, the son of Enops, cowering, crouched in his fine, polished chariot. Crazed with fear, and the reins flew from his grip. Patroclus, rising beside him, stabbed him. You gotta, you, you gotta follow this, all right? S beside him, stabbed his right jawbone, ramming the spearhead square between his teeth so hard he hooked him by that spearhead over the chariot rail. Hoisted, dragged the Trojan out as, epic simile, as an angler perched on a jutting rock ledge, drags some fish from the sea, some noble catch with line and glittering bronze hook. So with a spear, Patroclus gaffed him of his car, his mouth gaping around the glittering point, and flipped him down face first, dead as he fell, his life breath blown away. Oh, man. All right. So, um, as we were pointing out, Patroclus is having a lot of 
uh, success on the battlefield, all right? Gruesome as it may be. So um, what we see is Zeus um, regarding you know, Sarpedon, uh, the Trojan warrior, and how he's going to work that out. So in 426, we see, Sar we see Sarpedon about line 499. It says, watching his comrades drop and die, war shirts billowing free as Patroclus killed them. So he's just on a spree. Okay, Aristia, that's the word, if you remember that from earlier, dressed his godlike Lyce uh, Lycians down with a harsh shout. Lycians, where is your pride? Where are you running? Now be fast to attack. I'll take him myself. Uh, see who he is who routs us, wreaking havoc against us, cutting the legs from under squads of good, brave men. All right, so now we see Zeus at the top of page 427. My cruel fate. My Sarpedon, the man I love the most, my own son, doomed to die at the hands of Menetius' son, Patroclus. My heart is torn in two as I try to weigh all this. Shall I pluck him up now while he's still alive and set him down in the rich green land of Lycia, far from the war at Troy and all its tears? Or beat him down at Patroclus' hands at last? Like So Zeus is sitting here thinking, what is the best way to handle Sarpedon? I don't want him to suffer, but I don't want him to lose any glory. I don't want him not to be participant. Like I, I'm trying to figure out how to handle the care for this particular person. But Queen Hera, her eyes wide, protested strongly. Dread majesty, son of Cronus, what are you saying? A man, a mere mortal, his doom sealed long ago, you set him free from all the pains of death? Do as you please, Zeus, but none of the deathless gods will ever praise you. And I tell you this, take it to heart, I urge you, if you send Sarpedon home, living still, beware. Then surely some other god will want to sweep his own son clear of the heavy fighting too. Look down. Many who battle around King Priam's mighty walls are sons of the deathless gods. You will inspire lethal anger in them all. Like, do not do this. You're not the only god who has mortal sons fighting in this battle. And I know that you're torn up about what to do about Sarpedon, but if you do this, what's going to keep everybody else from doing it too? And then what? And everyone will hate you if you get to do this, but they don't get to do it. They will resent you and you may have a mutiny on Mount Olympus. No, dear as he is to you, and your heart grieves for him, leave Sarpedon there to die in the brutal onslaught, beaten down at the hands of Menatius' son Patroclus. But once his soul and life force have left him, send death to carry him home. Send soothing sleep all the way till they reach the broad land of Lycia. There his brothers and countrymen will bury the prince with full Royal rites, I've told you that's a very important thing, with mounted tomb and pillar. These are the solemn honors owed the dead. All right. So there we have Queen Hera trying to talk some sense into Zeus, all right, as far as how he handles Sarpedon. All right. Uh, we see Sarpedon killed on the very next page. It didn't take long. All right. So um, I'm about line. 566-ish. Again, Sarpedon missed over Patroclus' left shoulder, his spearhead streaked. It never touched his body. Patroclus hurled next. The bronze launched from his hand. No miss. A mortal hit. He struck him right where the midriff packs the pounding heart. And down Sarpedon fell as an oak or white poplar falls or towering pine that shipwrights uh, upon a mountain hue uh, upon a mountain hewed down with wetted axes for sturdy ship timber. So he stretched in front of his team and chariot, sprawled and roaring, clawing the, uh, the bloody dust as the, bull, a as the bull, a marauding lion, cuts from the herd. Again, the lion uh, motif being here. Okay, as, as the bull, a marauding lion, cuts from the herd, tawny and great-hearted among the shambling cattle, dies bellowing under his lion's killing jaws. So now Sarpedon, captain of Lycia's shieldsman, died at Patroclus' hand and died raging still, crying out his beloved comrade's name, Glaucus! Oh, dear friend, 
Dear fighter, soldier, soldier, now is the time to prove yourself a spearman, a daring man of war. Now, if you are brave, make grueling battle your one consuming passion first and find Lycia's captain rage and ranks. Spur them to fight and shield Sarpedon's body. Then you, Glaucus, you fight for me with bronze. You'll hang your head in shame every day of your life of the Argives strip my armor here at the anchored ships where I have gone down fighting. Hold on, full force, spur all your men to battle. All right, so as Sarpedon's going down, he calls out to Glaucus and says, hey, Take it from here, okay? And make sure that while I'm dying here on the battlefield, the Greeks don't take my body, take my armor as spoils for themselves, all right? And you start working to avenge me and help the Trojans out, all right? So Glaucus takes it from there, 429. Um, so it says, you know, Glaucus says um, about... Mm, 606, hear me, Lord Apollo, wherever you are now, this is Glaucus speaking, in Lycia's rich green country or here in Troy, wherever on earth you can hear a man in pain, you have that power and pain comes on me now. Look at this ugly wound. My whole arm rings with the stabbing pains. The blood won't clot. My shoulder's a dead weight. I can't take up my spear, can't hold it steady. No wading into enemy ranks to fight it out. He is like hurt on the battlefield and he is needing any help he can get. Zeus's is the most powerful he can think of. So here we go. And our bravest man is dead, Sarpedon, Zeus's son. Did Zeus stand by him? Not even his own son? I beg you, Apollo. Hear this heal this throbbing wound. Lull the pain now. Lend me uh, power in battle so I can rally our Lycians, drive them into war, and fight to save my comrade's corpse myself. So Glaucus prayed, and Apollo heard his prayer. He stopped the pains at once, snatched the dark blood, uh, stanched the dark blood in his throbbing wound, and filled his heart with courage. All right, so hmm, kind of brings the question, is Apollo taking better care of Glaucus than Zeus took of Sarpedon to begin with? All right, um, that's, a, that's a question to discuss at some time. All right, so um, what we see here is, let's see, I'm going to be moving to page 433. It says Zeus... Uh, figures the best way to proceed here, all right? And so um, he makes sure that Apollo uh, sees to it that Sarpedon's uh, gets the proper burial that he deserves, all right? So 433, about line 742, says, Not even a hawk-eyed scout could still make out Sarpedon, the battle swirling all around him. The man's magnificent body covered over head to toe, buried under a mass of weapons, blood, and dust. But they still kept swarming round and round the corpse like flies in a sheepfold buzzing over the brimming pails in the first spring days when the buckets flood with milk. So veteran troops kept swarming around the corpse, never pausing. Nor did mighty Zeus for a moment turn his shining eyes from the clash of battle. He kept them fixed on the struggling mass forever the father's spirit churning, thrashing out the ways, the numberless ways to cause Patroclus's slaughter. To kill him too, in the present bloody rampage over Sarpedon's splendid body? Hector in glory, cutting Patroclus down with hacking bronze, then tearing the handsome war gear off his back? Or let him take still more piling up his, his kills? As Zeus turned things over, that way seemed the best the valiant friend in arms of Peleus' son Achilles, would drive the Trojans and Hector, helmed in bronze, back to Troy once more, killing them by platoons, and Zeus began with Hector. He made the man a coward. And you see at the very bottom, uh, Hector says, retreat Trojans now. All right? So I think it's interesting here that in the middle of all this battle, what we see is Zeus wondering, what is the best way to handle um, uh, this Patroclus guy. Do I just take him down here? Do I let Hector kill him? Or 
No, maybe what I can do is just allow for him to find success and move the Trojans back to Troy. So, I mean, it's interesting because Zeus is going to allow Greeks to triumph, at least for a while here, according to this, right here, right now. He's going to let the Greeks triumph a little bit against the Trojans and drive the Trojans back. You continue reading and you look on page 434, what you'll see is that um, Zeus makes arrangements so that Sarpedon gets the rites and burial rituals that um, you know, he, he feels he deserves. We see Patroclus, you know, uh, there around line 809. You can see all these lists of kills that Patroclus gets because, you know, Zeus has allowed him to advance and he's just taking off Trojan after Trojan and they're all listed right there. All right, but I'm going to read that after that little break right there. It says, and then in there, the Achaeans might have taken Troy. They might have been successful. They might have taken Troy and her towering gates, toppling under Patroclus' power, heading the vanguard, storming on with his spear. But Apollo took his stand on the massive rampart, his mind blazing with death for him, but help for Troy. Three times, okay, listen to this pattern that goes on right here, and I will, I will show you why this is important. Three times Patroclus charged the jut of the high wall. Three times Apollo battered the man and hurled him back, the mortal god's hands beating down the gleaming shield. Then Patroclus's fourth assault, like something superhuman, the god shrieked down his winging words of terror. Back, Patroclus, prince, go back. It's not the will of fate that the proud Trojan citadel fall before your spear, not even before Achilles, far greater than you. And Patroclus gave ground, backing a good way off, clear of the deadly archer's wrath, all right? So we have a direct intervention here with Apollo looking at Patroclus and saying, Patroclus, no, this ain't gonna happen. You are not the person who's going to have any kind of success in bringing down the Trojans, all right? Uh, you're not going to take this city, all right? Achilles isn't gonna take this city and he's better than you are. So kind of who the heck do you think you are? Now, a word or two about that uh, structure there, where it says three times Patroclus charged the jut of the high wall, three times Apollo battered the man and hurled him back. All right, that is a structure that you will see plenty when reading these Greek uh, epic tales. All right, now I want to point out to you what we have right here. The oh, wait. Hmm. This one, the Odyssey, all right? We have Odysseus in the underworld, all right? And he says, three times I rushed toward her, desperate to hold her. Three times she fluttered through my fingers, sifting away like a shadow dissolving, like a dream. And each time the grief cut to the heart, sharper, etc. okay? So that three times I rushed toward her, three times she fluttered through my fingers, all right? Same structure here. We've got the Aeneid, which is written by Virgil instead of Homer. However, check this out. Three times I tried to fling my arms around her neck. Three times I embraced nothing. Her phantom sifting through my fingers, light as wind, quick as a dream in flight. All right, so that... Three times I tried to do this, but three times this other thing happened that kept me from doing it, or in this case, kept Patroclus from doing it. Um, you know, I just, I want to point that out. That is something that you will see a refrain throughout your reading of these epic tales. All right. Um, so let's see here. Uh, we have Apollo speaks directly to Hector on page 436, um, about line 841. He says, Hector, why stop fighting, neglecting your duty? If only I outfought you as you can outfight me, I'd soon teach you to shirk your work in a war. You'd pay the price, I swear. Up with you, fast. Lash those pounding stallions straight at Patroclus. You might kill him still, Apollo might give you the glory. 
and back Apollo strode, a god in the wars of men, while glorious Hector or, ordered skilled Cibrones flog the team to battle. So actually Apollo comes directly to Hector in the midst of battle and is just like, do it, get out there and make this happen, okay? You, you can't allow them to win, all right? Um, and so let's see here, we, what we see at the bottom of the page though is Patroclus uh, does kill Cibrones, okay? Now check out how this goes down. This is about line 859, it says, but he, being Patroclus, hit his driver, a bastard son of famed King Priam, Cibrones, yanking the reins back taut. Right between the eyes, the sharp stone crushed both brows. The skull caved in, and both eyes burst from their sockets, dropping down in the dust before his feet as the reinsman vaulted, uh, plunging off his well-wrought car like a diver. Sobroni's life breath left his bones behind, and you taunted his corpse, Patroclus, oh my rider. Look what a springy man, a nimble, flashy tumbler. Just think what he'd do at sea where the fish swarm. Why, the man could glut a fleet. Diving for oysters, plunging overboard, even in choppy, heaving seas, just as he dives to ground from his war car now. Even these Trojans have their tumblers. What a leap! All right, so he actually hits the man so hard, his eyeballs come out, and he falls over and then mocks him for, wow, that was a great dive. 10 out of 10. 438. We will see a uh, Patroclus getting hit, his mortal wound here. All right, beginning uh, about line 911, it says Patroclus, three times he charged with the headlong speed of Ares, screaming his savage cry, three times he killed nine men. Then at the fourth assault, Patroclus like something superhuman. Then Patroclus, the end of life came blazing up before you. Yes, the Lord Apollo met you there in the heart of battle, the God the terror. Patroclus never saw him coming, moving across the deadly route, shrouded in thick mist, and on he came against him and looming up behind him now, slammed his broad shoulders and back with the god's flat hand, and his eyes spun as Apollo knocked the helmet off his head, and under his horse's hooves it tumbled, clattering on with its four forged horns and its hollow blank eyes, and its plumes were all smeared in the bloody dust. Forbidden before this, to defile its crest and dust, it guarded the head and handsome brow of a god, a man like a god, Achilles. But now the father gave it over to Hector to guard his head in war. Since Hector's death was closing on him quickly, Patroclus, though, the spear in his grip was shattered, the whole of his rugged bronze shod shadow casting length, and his shield with straps and tassels dropped from his shoulders, flung down on the ground, and Lord Apollo, the son of Zeus, wrenched his breastplate off. Disaster seized him, his fine legs buckling. He stood there, senseless. You know, so what happened here is Apollo actually intervened in the war, and he smacked Patroclus and just kind of knocked his wits out of him. And then what we see here is somebody else, this is a Darden fighter, comes by and just spears Patroclus, takes him down. At the top of 439, he was the first to launch a spear against you, Patroclus, on my rider, but did not bring you down. Yanking out his ashen shaft from your body, back he dashed and lost himself in the crowds. The man would not stand up to Patroclus here in mortal combat, stripped, defenseless as he was. Patroclus, stunned by the spear and the, god, and the god's crushing blow, was weaving back to his own thronging comrades, trying to escape. Hector, waiting, watching the great-hearted Patroclus trying to stagger free, seeing him wounded there with a the sharp bronze, came rushing into him right across the lines and rammed his spear shaft home. All right? So somebody did, uh, so Apollo smacked Patroclus, somebody else gave him a wound so that Hector could come right on in and finish him off. Hector gets the glory of the kill of Patroclus. And we see on the uh, page 440, Patroclus's last words, Hector. 
Now is your time to glory to the skies. Now the victory is yours. A gift of the son of Cronus, Zeus, Apollo too. They brought me down with all their deathless ease. They are the ones who tore the armor off my back. Even if 20 Hectors had charged against me, they'd all have died here, laid low by my spear. No, deadly fate in league with Apollo killed me. Basically, it's because Apollo is on your side. That is why you beat me. You alone couldn't have done it. But you, with the help of the gods, sure. All right. And he goes on from there and yells out. You can see on line 1000, he yells out for Achilles. All right, so that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, like I said, a lot going on. You would do well having read this on your own before just taking all of this book in this video that I've made here. This video does not do justice to the book itself. Rarely do I think any of the videos I make do justice to the book itself. I'm just trying to help some people who are reading this make some sense, my own students, uh, namely. All right, so... Please uh, read book 16 on your own, read book 17, annotate it, formulate some thoughts, uh, meet me here again, and I will give you the thoughts that I have on book 17, all right? So until then, and as always, happy reading.